Nick, the, um, the SAC numbers are up significantly from last year. How much of that is an impact of Hassan Reddick? Um, yeah, I think it's the impact of the entire defense of how they're playing. Obviously, Hassan's a great pass rusher, and so um, that's why we, we wanted to bring him here. And so he's got 10, so there, there's 10 additional ones right there. But, it, I mean, it's, it's a lot of production by a lot of different guys. It's what's pretty impressive about it. And what's, what also is impressive is it just keeps, you know, the, the fact that they can stay fresh and the numbers of the, the plays that they're getting, they can be, you know, people don't sub offensive linemen, right? It's not like, hey, the offensive linemen played 37% of the plays, right? But the defense, the teams that can sub the defensive linemen, that's a huge advantage. You know, but you don't sub unless you have the guys that you really believe in that can do it. And we definitely do have that. So a lot of credit of our sack numbers going up, deserve, you know, deservingly so should go to Hassan. But it's a great unit and whole. And then our secondary is doing a great job of making them hold the ball, take longer. Our, um, you know, our, uh, our defensive coaches are, are doing a good job of putting, Jonathan's doing a good job of putting them in position uh, to help make the guy hold the ball, take longer. And then obviously those guys are going out there and winning their one-on-one -on -one pass rushes. The, uh, the last month without Dallas, what have you learned about the offense? Are there things that you figured out that can help even now when he's back? Yeah, sure. I mean, you you, we, you can't wait until you get him back because he's gonna he's gonna be able to. He makes a ton of plays. He's a he's a great tight end, one of the best tight ends in the NFL. And uh, but you have to adapt when you're when you when you got to adapt. Okay, well it's it's the same thing when you're playing a certain style of defense. You might want to run a certain set of plays, but you might not be able to because they're dictating that you can't do that. And and so. Um, you know, we were able to we were able to get some other guys going. Uh, be, you know, with with Dallas being out and Quez is the one guy that really has uh, has uh, really stepped up uh, big time with with uh, Dallas being down um, as far as his production goes. So, um, you know, it, it, the thing that you learn is just that you have a lot of capable guys. Uh, it reconfirms to you that you got a lot of capable guys on this offense. John has said. And he said last year, towards the end, he said again, all throughout the offseason, that this was the first time that, since his high school year that he was going to be in an offense and with the same play caller for consecutive years. What have you, what kind of, what have you noticed at any point off season or, or in season that where that's been the case where you said, okay, the benefit of being in the offense for the second. Yeah, year in a row. I, I think you, you, you see that a lot in his reads, right? Where because that's where he, that's where it's going to show up the most because you're running similar plays that he's been running for two years. He's seeing different defenses. He's going to different places with the football based off of what the defense is doing. Uh, there was a play that he made. One of my favorite plays that he made in the game. Um, yesterday was a was a four yard gain to Zach Pascal. Well, why? Why? Why would that be your favorite play? Because it was designed to go one place with the ball. We actually got the coverage we thought we were going to get, um, and and it didn't go there because it was just a little it was a little cloudy over there. So he hey oh man they're playing the coverage we think we're gonna that we thought we were gonna play on this one. I'm gonna deliver a ball there. Eh, it looks cloudy. Ball to to Zach Pascal um, for a four yard gain, and it was that was a that's a sweet play. And like those are those are showing you like his his just his growth his development of of that and so um and that's a play that we've been running for a couple years and that he's got a lot of reps on he knows what it's supposed to look like when it's not looking that way he moves on and so i think that's a really good example of that and that's one of the plays we showed in the team meeting today of just really good quarterback play Nick, uh, when you guys released anthony harris over the uh, in the summer what were the converse and then he came back for a week on the practice squad and then kind of went off to to look for another job. What were the conversations like, and how do you make sure that they, things stay positive even when a guy gets cut in case you do need to bring him back? Well, I just think that goes back to the relationships that you form. Like, and those are, you know, listen, when you have to make a cut, it's nobody, It's not harder on anybody more than the, the, the player that's getting cut. And um, it's always hard on me. I always feel like, hey, we've built these relationships, and, you know, this is a hard part of the job, but it's not, it's not harder for me than it was Anthony. And so, um, and so I, I guess where you, you don't in that moment conversation, I don't, that's never going to be comfortable conversation. It's never going to be, uh, you know, a conversation that you, either, neither you guys want to remember. And so it's the time that leads up to that. That's what matters. Right. Or the time after that, that, that connection, 
um, that's what you want to build. And, and it doesn't, it, ma- it makes that conversation, the connection that you actually build throughout then makes that conversation harder, but it, it also keeps you connected to the guy. And then in the, you know, in this case, um, you know, I'm really happy that we have, uh, Anthony back here. I missed him. And uh, it's good to see his face again. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be good to see him out at walkthrough today. It's going to be good to see him out at practice tomorrow. And, uh, yeah, I'm just happy to have we have, we have him back. Go back to Jeff's question. Did you and Jalen ever reflect or talk about certain plays that he might not have made last year that he made this year? Or is that all sort of unspoken? No, I mean, we, we've corrected those. We've moved from those. I mean, you use plays a lot of times like, hey, look what happened last year on this one. You went there with the ball. But, you know, you'll use them as references, but it's more, hey, how do we fix the ones that we, we didn't make this week? So, and, and what was really good about the ones we did make this week so we can continue to move forward. But you always use plays from the past um, to help get a coaching point across, whether that's how a quarterback reads a certain play or how a receiver runs a certain route or how a tight end or, or offensive line blocks a specific play. We have this great computer system and we have these great uh, video coordinators. Uh, led by Pat Dolan, that are that have so much film uh, available to us, and that we can pull from to to use as teaching points. Nick, the way you've won these last two games, um, do you feel like your team has found another gear here as you hit the home stretch of, of, of regular season? I think what we just feel like is that we're improving um, and that we're getting better each day, um, and that's our goal. Like that's all you can really think about. You can't think about. Like when we were one and zero, we couldn't think about being twelve and one. All we could focus on is how we, do we get better today? How do we get better today? How do we get better today? Like okay, we we clinched a playoff spot, but nobody's thinking about the playoffs. All we're thinking about is how we get better today. So, I guess you know what you've seen the last couple of weeks is just uh, is just improvements, right? And um, then we left a lot of things on the table that we that we corrected and that we've corrected the last two days, and, and we and we sorted it out in front of the, the team today, and we'll get better from from those things too. And and that's the goal is to improve, and so we're a little bit better next week. Getting back to the D-line. Getting back to the D-line. I get everybody. Getting back to the D-line. Um, the fact that BG is playing fewer snaps than he has, um, how has that made him more effective? Well, it keeps him fresh. There's no doubt. And it keeps, like, like I said about the, you know, it, it keeps the defensive line fresh. And it to keep not just benefits BG, it benefits all, uh, all of them. Um, that that they're staying fresh and that they have uh, everything they can give on each each play. They know they got to make those plays count. Um, and so, you know, he's he's done a great job and of of taking advantage of the reps that he's gotten. And and he's and even though BG's not out there at times, like you know, he's he's the leader. You know, he's the one of the biggest leaders on this football team. And people thrive off of and 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 it's contagious. His energy is contagious. And so. Um, I think he's just having a great year. It's been it's been over a calendar year now that you sort of handed the play calling off to Shane. Uh, you always say you wanted to put your signature on everything about this team. How has taking that CEO approach as a coach? How has that helped you? I think it helps me in just situational football uh, a big time. Um, you know where. One thing that I think that I really feel as a benefit is, hey, you know, Shane and myself and the offense staff are putting a plan together. And then, you know, starting about tomorrow, um, you know, I'll be able to really dive into every situation that happens. And, and that means throughout the league to put ourselves in scenarios throughout the league um, that are going to, you know, so we've went through it before it happens, right? And we got to, you know, and Shane's in that at that point, Shane's going to be like, all right, what am I going to call in this scenario, this scenario? Now we go through all that, but, you know, Shane's going to really have a feel for, for that. And, and I think that's a, that's, you know, when he's there studying, um, you know, certain things of orders of how he's going to call some things here and there, I'm able to do some of the things that are going to be necessary for fourth down decisions or um, two minute decisions or four minute decisions, or, you know, some of those things that, uh, that I got to really be on. Right. And because, we know the margin of error in this league is very small, um, and and I got to be on, on my duties as a head coach. I got to be all on those things and, and be convicted on when I'm making decisions, and not just blind conviction. Conviction based off of uh, major major studying, and that's what after the plan's in, right? After Shane and myself and the offense staff have put the plan in, that's kind of the way you know we kind of go. I'm, I'm working on that part of it. Shane's working on this part of it, and I feel a big benefit from that. And 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 uh, I know we're getting better in our process each day with that and each week. As you studied offenses and coaches throughout the years, and, and Scott Prospects did, Mike Leach resonate with you at all? 
Yeah. Yeah, he did. And, uh, you know, he, uh, he'll he be missed. I know that he's, t- you know, particularly our guys in our building, I know he's touched uh, guys in our building, you know, with, with Garner playing for him, with, with Andre playing for him. Um, and so – yeah, I mean, he was always ex- always exciting to watch his the way his team. Any, you know, as a wide receiver, as a quarterback, um, anytime a team's throwing it sixty times, you're like, what, 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 what did they do right there? How did they do this? And we've definitely gotten plays from his tape that that we still run today and that we liked and like, that were very interesting. And and then he just, I just think he had an awesome way about him of, you know, everything, the way he coached, the energy he coached with, uh, the the way he talked to the media, like there's just a lot of things to like about the man. He'll be missed in this sport. Um, but I, I think Cliff Kingsbury said it. He left this sport better um, than, than before he was in, it was in it. And I think that's, that's pretty cool legacy to have that you leave a place better. You leave your profession better than when you came in. And that's a tribute to who coach Leach was as a coach, um, as a person and, and everything. Look across the sideline and, and see someone you essentially grew your coaching career alongside. Yeah, that is that is cool. Um, that is really cool because I, I got a lot of respect for for Flus and uh, everything that he stands for. I think he's a phenomenal coach. I really do. Um, every. We had a lot of talks, you know, it, it, whether that's, hey, how we're getting ready for practice, how we're going to do this segment of practice or this and that. Frank kind of would set the stage and he said, you two figure out how you're going to go through this and in training camp or whatnot. And uh, and I'm, I'm happy for him that he's, you know, because he's it's well deserved that he is in the position he's in right now um, as the head coach of, of a good organization. And so it is neat. You, you build friendships with people. Um, you know, he, did, he probably lived – I, I, I probably I pr- I probably couldn't have thrown a baseball to his house from where I where I live uh, um, from my house, but some guy you know Jalen probably could. Um, and uh, so you know our families got to know each other. Um, he's got a great family, and and he's a he's a great person. He's a great football coach. Um, I'm happy for him uh, that he's in this the is the head coach, and I know that we're gonna, I just know how good of a coach he is too, and that we're gonna have to be on our stuff because I know they're, he's gonna have them on their stuff. One and the lock is open. Yeah, Jalen, you can go ahead if you want. Oh, uh, I don't know if you've seen the video yet, but um, speaking of Jalen, Micah Parsons had some thoughts on Jalen's position in the MVP race and what it's attributed to. Did you have any kind of response to, to Micah thinking it was a a system situation more than Jalen and what he's been able to do? Honestly, so I, I I'm not familiar with with uh, with that yet. I don't. Yeah, I imagine I, someone will bring it to my attention next week. Um, if, yeah, I don't. I don't know. I, I don't know. Um, we're worried about the Bears. No, and Bears only. Go ahead, John. Um, Jalen right now leads the NFL in completion percentage from the pocket. What have you seen? He's most improved on some interesting stats. They can they can pull any <laughs> stats. Seventy three percent from the pocket. Right. His anticipation throws, the timing throws, and the deep ball throws from the pocket. What has he most improved on? I just think I, I think what he's most improved on is just his timing with everything of how we see in the field. Um, it all starts with that. Like you can be as accurate as you want. You can you can be the most accurate person in the world, but if you're not seeing it in time, these defensive backs close quick, and if you're not seeing it in time, these defensive linemen these defensive linemen can close quick. So I think the biggest improvement and that he just keeps getting better at is is his vision and how he's seeing it, and it's because he works his butt off. He's he's always here he's always in this building it it doesn't matter what time of day it doesn't matter if the players are in that day or not he's always here always working on his craft always working on you know getting his body physically ready always working on his mind making sure that's mentally ready tribute to Jalen he's a big time he's a stud